Hi, this is Brian with The Balanced Dog, and today I'm going to do a little long line demo. What I have here is a 15-foot Lucas Agnew dynamic long line. And what makes that dynamic is that if a dog bolts, for instance, in an extreme case, bolts on you and hits the end of this line, there's about a 30% absorption, energy absorption, shock absorption, not only on the dog but on the handler. So it, it's a little safety feature that we like not only in the long lines, but our, our slip leads as well. And basically this is like a slip lead, it's just 15 feet, right? So you can just slip it on the dog and get busy. So the way I, uh, well, I have an unfair advantage here in that I climbed for nine years. So I'm really used to flaking out and, and belaying 60 meters of rope. So it just comes fairly natural to me. But in order to work with dogs, I kind of had to tweak a few things. So. Here's a good way to practice. So you can get a carabiner like I have here or, or just tie it off to something. This is the loop that goes into the dog, right? So clip it there. So I set myself up with the loop over my index finger. This should never really come into play. So if a dog was to bolt on me, what I do is I just let him go out and as the line runs out, I just roll my hand like this and that's gonna take the load versus your finger. The only reason this comes into play is if you got your long line all tangled up and you don't know how to manage it properly and you're kind of wrapping it here and all of a sudden the dog bolts or lunges out and you, you have no way of letting that line pay out smoothly and so your finger is going to get tweaked. So that's what I'm going to show you how to prevent. So the art of coiling and flaking, right? So coiling, basically if I want to take that slack in, I'm just going to coil and flake it over my hand like this. Right? So you see it's just flaked on there. And I'm not holding it tight or anything uh, because I have 15 feet. If the dog starts moving out, it's not a big deal. He's going to run out of leash. So when that dog moves out from me, what I do is if I move away, I just let it flake off my hands. Right? And if I want to take the slack in, I just coil and drape it right back over my hand again. So the other thing I do is I usually run this leash just kind of in that gap right there with my thumb and my index finger. So if a dog's moving out, it's just running this way. If I'm coiling it back in, I just coil it. So it's just like a guide and it keeps the slack from getting under the dog's legs. The other thing I do is if I want to work the dog close to me, like in a heel position or working sits close to me, and I want to set that leash up for a walking length, I just do what I call the finger lock. And so basically if I want to cut the rest of this rope out of play, right, and I'll just coil it here. So, so I, <coughs> excuse me, so I find the length and I come in here and I cut and I just lock it over the finger. And again, much like this setup, this finger shouldn't take the brunt, right? Again, it's just another anchor point. But if I need to put pressure on the dog, I'm just going to use the palm of my hand this way. So if I have to check the dog, I can just check this way. If I have to put pressure up on the dog, I can pull up this way. And I can always just vary that length and then lock it right back in again. So hope that helps with managing your long lines. This is how I always start the dogs. It's the best way to get a feel for the dog, who he is, what his drives are, what level those drives are. And it's a great way to start building a relationship with the dog. And if I can get him to pay attention and follow me in this open field, just using 15 feet and a slip lead on the end, that's a good way to start a relationship. From there, you can build anything you want. So check them out, long lines and slip leads. Lucas Agnew Dynamic, Dynamic Long Lines and Slip Leads, LucasAgnew.com. Get your long line and get busy practicing.